Hello from the Oklahoma Summit on Access to Justice in Oklahoma City. I'm John Williams, the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Bar Association. I'm your host today, and I'm really excited about the guest that we have to talk with us a little bit today. If our guest would tell us who he is. I'm Jim Sandman. I'm President of the Legal Services Corporation, which is the country's largest funder of civil legal aid programs. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us on the road. It's a pleasure to be here in Oklahoma City. Today we're talking about access to justice with Jim Sandman. And Jim, this morning you did a presentation. Can you tell us a little bit about what you told the folks here today? Yes, my focus was on what we call the justice gap. The justice gap is a term that is used to describe the difference between the civil legal needs of low-income Americans and the resources available to meet those needs. Last year, the Legal Services Corporation funded a comprehensive study to try to measure the magnitude of the justice gap. We contracted with the National Opinion Research Council at the University of Chicago to do an online and telephone survey of 2,000 low-income Americans. We also did a study through the 133 legal aid programs we fund to track what happened to people who showed up seeking service. Did they get help? Were they turned away? If they got help, was the help adequate? And what I was reporting on was the results of both of those components of the study that we did. And what were those results? The NORC study, the online and telephone survey, showed that in the prior year, 71% of low-income Americans had at least one civil legal problem. For fully one quarter of low-income Americans, they had six or more civil legal problems. The study also showed that 86% of the civil legal needs of low-income people get either no help at all or inadequate help. At this study done at the legal aid programs that LSC funds, we saw that 41% of people were turned away with no help of any kind because of inadequate resources, even though they were financially eligible for service. The other 59%, only 28%, got adequate legal help. The rest got some help, but not what legal aid lawyers thought was necessary to address their problems fully. You know, in this day and time, with the number of people who qualify for services and the scarce resources, I know that funding is always an issue for Legal Services Corporation. How is your funding situation this year? Well, I have good news on that front. In the past two fiscal years, the president has proposed that all funding for the Legal Services Corporation be eliminated. Uh, But instead, Congress has not only not eliminated our funding, they increased our funding by $25 million to uh, now a total of $410 million. That reflects, I think, wide bipartisan support for civil legal aid on Capitol Hill. People recognize that this is an American value, a nonpartisan value access to the justice system for people who may not be able to afford a lawyer. It's uh, demonstrated that uh, we have many people on Capitol Hill of both political parties who regard this as an important issue to Americans and that they're committed to supporting it. Uh, Having said that, the funding that we have is not nearly adequate to address the problem, as you can tell from the numbers that I just cited on the large numbers of people who don't get any legal help. The funding for the Legal Services Corporation in the current fiscal year, $410 million, uh, amounts to less than what Americans spend every year on Halloween costumes for their pets. What does that tell you about our national values? Well, I think that probably answers itself. We talked about my involvement with legal services before we went on the air here today, so I certainly don't have the knowledge at the level you have, but... During the time that I was the statewide director for legal services here in the state, I realized that there's actually some good business decisions to be made in in helping folks. For instance, keeping people in housing, keeping people housed is so much less expensive than people being homeless. Do you have information or any study information that goes along those lines? You're absolutely right. There are many studies across the country that document the return on investment for dollars spent on legal aid. And what they show over and over again is that there is a 
a return factor typically of at least six dollars return for every one dollar invested in, in civil legal aid because of things like avoided homelessness costs when you can prevent an eviction or avoided hospitalization or law enforcement costs when you can get a protection order for a victim of domestic violence. Uh, there are m many studies, all of which point in the same direction, that this saves the government money, it saves society money, it's a good expenditure of funds. You know, in, in an era where a lot of people talk about government running as business, and I, I don't want to get into whether that's right or wrong, but certainly what you just told me was is that legal services is and providing people with civil representation is, is not only a good American value, but it's a good business value. It makes great business sense. If you're to do a conventional cost-benefit analysis, this is a winner. Uh, the challenge is it's a great unknown in American society. Most Americans don't realize that you don't have a right to a lawyer in a civil case. Studies show actually that they think the opposite. They think you do have a right to a lawyer in a civil case. I have my own theory for why that's true. I think most Americans get their knowledge of the legal system from television shows. Most television shows are about the criminal justice system, not the civil justice system. I think many Americans could give you a pretty good approximation of a Miranda warning, including that part about having a right to a lawyer and one being appointed to represent you if you can't afford to pay for one, with no understanding that there is no such right as a general matter in a civil case. So making the business case that you're talking about, the case that is so persuasive, actually requires that we raise awareness, uh, not only of the need for civil legal aid, but of the return on investment when you do spend money on legal aid. You know, I'm going to do this a little bit backwards because we brought you in with your title, but can you tell our listeners a little bit about the road that took you to where you are today? I got where I am by an unusual route. I spent most of my career in a big law firm, uh, Arnold & Porter. It's an international law firm based in Washington, D.C. I spent 30 years there. I was managing partner of the firm for 10 years. I loved my law firm. Uh, my law firm had one of the best pro bono programs in the world. My law firm did Gideon versus Wainwright, the case that established the right to a lawyer in a criminal case in state courts in the United States. But I found, uh, after some years as managing partner, that I began to feel a disconnect between what I was doing for a living and who I am as a person, what my personal values are. And I've always tried uh, to find a harmony between what I do professionally and what I value personally. I came to feel as if uh, I were devoting my professional life to making rich people richer, uh, which is not why I went to law school. I'm talking about running a law firm and the rich people I was making richer were the lawyers, not the clients. And I decided that it was time for me to make a change in, in my career. So I decided to get into public service and public interest work. My first stop was to be general counsel of the District of Columbia Public Schools. If you're looking to make a change in your career, try moving from a big law firm to the District of Columbia Public Schools. I made that move over the course of 36 hours. It was wild. But it was... I think the best thing I've ever done professionally, it got me out of the big law firm bubble. Uh, it threw me in uh, to the deep end of a set of challenges, public education in a big city that I'd never uh, faced before, and uh, it was a growth experience for me. I, after doing that for a few years, I heard about the opening at the Legal Services Corporation and thought, what a great opportunity uh, to play a management role in an organization that I think is addressing the most important issue facing the legal system in the United States today. That is the inability of people who can't afford a lawyer to have meaningful access to the system. So I found a, a way to combine my prior management experience gained in the private sector with a mission that I love. Great. Before we wrap up, if you had one thing to say to our listeners about access to justice, something that they might not know, what would it be? I'd want to say two things. Uh, first, I'd want to emphasize the magnitude of the, of the problem with uh, millions of people in the United States today trying to navigate a civil justice system alone without representation because they can't afford a lawyer. What they face is a system that was created by lawyers, for lawyers, that doesn't work, does not work as intended if you don't have counsel. And second, I'd want them to know about the exciting things going on to try to address that situation, such, such as this summit uh, here in, in Oklahoma City. 
to identify creative solutions to expand access to justice to bring us back to the most fundamental, the most fundamental of American values, justice, equal justice, regardless of what your economic status is. Wow, that's pretty good stuff. Before we close out today, I have one last question for you. If our listeners would like to follow up, how can they reach you? That's easy. My email address is jsandman at lsc.gov. My telephone number is 202 202- 295-1515. That's my direct line. I try to respond to every email I get the day I receive it. I answer my own phone. If you contact me, you'll hear back. Thank you so much. We've reached the end of the road for today's episode. I want to thank our guest for being with us today. I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please rate us in Apple Podcast. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Uh